and the greatness of the name. We thank you for this in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you haven't noticed, I'm not Pastor Curtis. And Curtis and his family are on vacation this week. They've gone back up to Michigan. They had joined the sights and sounds that are there. Um, and so for this week, we've got some adjustments to the normal schedule and functions of the church. We won't be having Tuesday night dinner, and we won't be having a Tuesday night um, service as such for this week. But we will be having men's church, men's breakfast, I should say, on Thursday morning, and we're going to have it right here at the church. And I've been tagged this week to uh, prepare. So as I said to the men, get ready because Burger King does croissants. <laughs> Okay, I'll actually make a better effort than that. So, if you haven't been attending one of the men's breakfasts, feel free to come. You know where we're going to be. We get together between 7 to 7.30. We have a little bit of fellowship. We'll eat by 7.30 to 7.45. And then some of us, sadly, that have to go to work, we'll go to work after that. Of course, it wants to stay on the night. Um, is there anyone here today that hasn't been here before that we could make note of? I think I recognize all the faces. And it's so good to see so many of you. All right. So that's it for our announcements, unless anyone has something I'm not aware of this week. Good? Good to know? All right. Why don't we open with our song of praise today? Great is thy faithfulness on page 140. Let's all stand and sing together.
There are some in the front and some on the side. So you can follow along as we continue reading through the Bible. You know, it's our goal this year as a congregation, and as members of the Global Methodist Church, to strive to read through the Bible, to know God's Word, and be able to apply it in our lives. To be Bible-centered in everything that we do, and to give you a message of God, from God, by God, each week. By God. <laughs> All right. So today's scripture reading will come from the book of Mark. It's chapter 1, verses 9 through 13. Hear now the word of God. At that time, Jesus, oh, sorry, yes. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my Son, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was in the desert forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels were tempted. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. It's the time for us in our offering, so if the usher can please come forward. <laughs> Of music 
presented to us by Harvard. So Harvard, all yours.
it would work out. Well, thank you guys for having me out here today and to preach the gospel. First of all, I know it was in the announcement, but I want to say thank you for, you have to pardon me because this is very tough. Thank you for all the things you guys have done for me and me. Financially, prayer wise. It's not easy for someone like me to thank or to seek help. I was raised, I'm a boomer, so I was raised in a generation who pulled yourself up by your bootstraps and you got it done. You never asked for help. You just persevered through that. And I'm not good at saying thank you, but I'm usually doing everything for myself. So I just want to tell you thank you from the bottom of my heart. For all your prayers, and uh, it's really tough for me to ask for help. So I just thank you for that very much, uh, what you guys have done. And uh, with that, we'll be we'll all in the prayer. Father God, we just pray right now that you just empty out everything that is me, everything that is part of me. And Father God, I just pray for the listeners that you open their ears, that they may hear the word of God in a new way, that their hearts are intent on pursuing what you have to say to them. Father God, use me as your vessel. That I may do your will. But as we read in Mark 9 through 12, Jesus is baptized. An angel comes down and it reveals to everyone around them that this is the Son of God. An announcement is made. Now for the rest of the story. Over in Matthew 4, 1 through One through eleven. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you be the Son of God, tell the stones become bread. But then Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not even escape your foot on the stone, strike on the stone. But then Jesus came back and says, it is also written, do not put the Lord God to test. Then again the devil said to him, took him up to the very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their splendor. All this I give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Go away for he said to me. For it is also, or it is written, worship the Lord God and serve him only. Then the devil left and the angels came. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So what you see here, and I kind of feel this in a way, is that when I decided to make the pursuit of my preaching degree or my preaching within the UMC, even though I've done things throughout all the world, well, yeah, I might as well say the world because I've been in the country, and preached the gospel and done God's work, but when I said yes to the call of being a pastor, it was revealed to do. Satan came immediately. Immediately. And all you know that all you guys know what's going on in my life and such things as that. That I have just been a hammer one thing after another. But as you notice that Jesus, the minute it was revealed that he was the Son of God and that God is pleased with him, guess what? <laughs> Satan came. Immediately. So what we learn from this is. Jesus came there and Jesus didn't give his own words. He didn't give his own excuses. He said, it is written. He didn't go like, well, you know, I've heard this. I've seen this. He said, it is written. These are things written by God. And Jesus didn't just, well, Jesus being God, he had a little bit of advantage over us, but he used the word to defend himself against the enemy. And he even used the word when he told Satan, leave, be gone. He used the word to be his enemies. 
So what we've been thinking about is we've been doing the, you know, through the Bible thing, we've been learning the Word. The Word of God, if we think of the armor, is our soul. It defends us, but it's also to use as an offense. It is the Word of God. We don't, use the, we don't use a sword to dig up potatoes and such things. We use the sword to defend ourselves. We use the sword to slash and to stab. That's what swords are used for. I mean, God has given us the word, which is the sword, which is the word of God. He's given us all the tools we need to defend ourselves. Not only the Holy Spirit has given us to enable us to do the thing that He wants us to do, and empowers in that time we need. And yes, the Holy Spirit is there, and you don't have the words to say, the Holy Spirit will give you those words. But my thing is, if those words are buried in your heart, they're buried in your soul, they're buried within you, the Holy Spirit will just recover those and bring them up. And when the enemy comes and does this, you go like, go away with it. The Word says, by His stripes, I am healed. The Word says, I am above, not below. I am the head, not the tail. This is what the Word says. And even in those times when we were broken hearted, and this scripture came to me when I had to do another sermon, a difficult sermon for a suicide. Psalms said, The Lord is close to those that are broken hearted. And He saves those who are crushed in spirit. And I'm telling you, I'm broken hearted. I'm crushed in spirit. It's not easy seeing someone you love. It would be difficult. So I hold on to that scripture. And I use it. Every time the enemy comes and says, hey, guess what? Look at this. I'm like, God is close to me because my heart is broken. God will save me because my spirit is crushed. Go, leave, get thee behind. Because I'm standing on the word of God. Standing on the promises. You know, so I'm standing on the promises of Christ my Savior. Or standing on those promises. We have been equipped. And you know the thing I was thinking about today, you know, when Satan comes at you, you've got your sword. Don't realize that I have a family. I have a platoon. I have an army of God. That when I have people standing beside me and praying and then help when I need it. And when things are tough, I'm not defending it by myself. I have others with me. And some others have better skills than I do. Maybe I'm better with the sword. Maybe I'm better with the sword than others, and others are not as good with the sword. Maybe others are better with the sword. But I have that hope. So the point of what I'm saying is that we need, when we read the Bible, we need to start learning the Word of God, bearing it within our hearts, memorizing it. Not that we have to know if it's Matthew this year, but we know what the Word of God is. We say it is written. It is written down. We, we say it in our Apostles' Creed, in our Nicene Creed. We say these things. We affirm who Christ is. We affirm our faith. So I got thinking about this. It's like, you know when I was a, a kid, going to Sunday school, we had the bus come by and pick us up. We'd go to Sunday school, and they'd give us a memory verse. Next Sunday, if you knew the memory verse, you got something special. A piece of candy, a toy, whatever. I remember vacation Bible school that you had memory verses every day. And at the end of the week on that Friday, boy, if you knew the memory verses, you got a special treat. Or if you were in that group that knew the memory verses, guess what? You got to go swimming. You got to go on the field. You, you got to do something. So it was incentive to know that in that world because there was something special. Well, you know, if we can bury that word in our heart right now, we have something more special than that. We have a defensive weapon against what's going on. We can tell the devil that we know the word, and he knows the word too. As you saw in the scripture, he says, Well, it was written. He knew he knows the word too. It is written. But Jesus said, Also it was written. Also. The devil knows the word. And that's why we got to go. We got to bury it on the cross. We got to get it in. We got to go back to that childhood. When we were excited to learn the word of God. You know, it, it, it goes to a world time. You know? The world hammers us. And the enemy hammers us. And we live in a broken and fallen world. 
And we live in where just every day you know, I want to do this, I want to read my word, I want to pray. Then all of a sudden there's a phone call. But there's this, but there's that. You know? And I do, and I'm not lifting, but I do appreciate the word read every day. By me. Or me on Facebook. That's a blessing. I'm glad to call to do that. Because in some ways, I need that word. And I'm just so under the weight that I just can't read it. You know, uh, you know, I have some difficulties being dyslexic and stuff, but it is such a blessing to hear the word. And not just, and you never know what word, uh, excuse me, that you need that day. But anytime God's word is read, there's something in your words. Always. Always. It's funny because I didn't preach this way in the early service because I'm preaching to a different group, a different crowd. It's interesting, as I'm going through school, and one of you guys know that I'm working on, uh, the book I'm reading right now is Preaching from the Soul. That means we as preachers are not up on a pedestal, and we're not soulless, and we're not, you know, um, unscathed by the world. And this book says the true preaching comes from the soul. True, true preaching comes when you expose yourself. And believe me, I am not good at exposing myself. I am not good at telling people what's going on in my life. I'm good about hiding. I'm a baby woman. We grew up in tough times. We had wars. We had the whole nuclear thing going on. And we had to buckle up, man. Man, the sorrow of it all, man, we died on those tables. We did all the things that we needed to do. We did these things. And we were used to self-sustaining. You know, as Jerry was telling me, when his father got sick, he had to step up, step up to the job and step up to it. Put everything else behind him. Because that's what we were taught. Especially as men, we were taught not to be vulnerable. We were taught not to cry. We were taught to look at women, and if you did cry, you didn't, nobody saw it. Because you didn't want anybody to think you were weak. But if we're not weak, then we don't need Jesus. If we're so strong, we don't need a Savior. That's why Jesus came. That's why Paul says, when I'm weak, He is strong. We sing that little song. When I am weak, He is strong. We need a Savior. But He's also given us the Word of God that is our defensive tool, our offensive tool, and that enables us to do Thank God we have some So my prayer today is whenever that steps out and you're called forth to do something, no matter what it is, when you're called forth to say hello to somebody that comes to mind. Or uh, you know, pray for somebody and be observing. He's telling about a guy who was watching them at an airport. This lady, a young lady was going around inviting me to their church, which was not the real church. And so this preacher had to say, you know what, I can't take it anymore. And he went and spoke and said, listen, what are you doing? And we said, he used the name of Jesus. She screeched. Because the power of the name of Jesus. The power of the word. You know, we have the red letters in here. And so when we read that scripture, Matthew 4, 1 through 11, it says, Jesus said, it is written. And if Jesus needed to use the word, he certainly He could have used his own words. He could have just called down the, the heavens and the angels would have came down and would have just lifted him up and everything would have been good. But he did this so that we know that the word is powerful. That the word is a two-edged sword. Cuts through the ball and the marrow. We know the word of God and the power of it. So we've got to learn to use our sword. We've got to learn to wield that sword with both hands, steady. Or even to the point that we're so good with the work that we just use money. Or we can use two of them. Double. You know, kind of dimensions. How to do that? That He has enabled us. He's given us the tools to do so. The Word of God. And yes, we have all the electronics and all that stuff. But nothing means to go away. And if there's a situation going on, don't move a little. Don't move a little. 
Get into this. Get into the Word that's on your tablet, iPad, wherever it is your app. Get into the Word of God. You can't trust it. Because Google is the world. You can't trust it. Put your faith in His Word and what is written. Get in there. Whether it be on your tablet or your Bible, get in and say, Lord, I hold the Spirit out of your direction. Where is the Word? And just start with me. And believe it or not, it's not a fairy tale, it's not fantasy, it's not magic power. It's there. Everything we need is in the Word of God. It is the living Word of God. That's why I say it's living. Because my situation may not be the same as yours. But that same Word can come out of that same Scripture. You read the Word and it may say one thing. To me it's saying one Because it's living. It's impactful. It's powerful. It's within us. It touches our souls, our minds, and our spirit. That's why it's unlike any other book in the world. We can do poetry and we can study this, we can watch plays, we can do all this stuff, we can listen to music, everything we can do, and that is all wonderful and glorious. But it's not like the Word of God. And it's not like the very end of our hearts and our souls. So at the time when the enemy comes in and we're like, where are we going to be music here and we're going to be my soul? Okay, I'm ready. No. It's very easy. We can go like, Satan so starts attacking you. Get, it is written, get thee behind me, Satan. It is written, get thee behind me. You don't necessarily have to say it's written, but you can say, get thee behind me, Satan. Because that's what the Word of God says. The Word of God says, I will trample you under my feet. That's the Word of God. Now the enemy comes and he tries to be all big and all powerful and all blown up. But the Word of God cuts the down The Word of God enables us to stand. The word of God says, when you've done all the stand, stand. When you've done everything, just stand. Put on the whole world of God. If you think about the of God, it doesn't have anything about it. So we're not going to turn to God. We're to stand. And God will enable us to stand. You know, man, we have to be given so much time. I don't never get this much time. It was awesome uh, to do this because our teacher is sitting there, you know, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Like, you know, you got all this time for everything going on. Like, you know, but when you can really express what's in your heart, what's really there, and be involved and open so that people can see your heart and see your heart. So, my call today is for those watching on YouTube, Facebook, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, man, you ought to. You ought to. If you're suffering and dealing with things alone, and you may have things around you, but man, and you know what? I felt alone, you're like, you know, you're off in the morning, man, feeling rough, and you, know, and you don't have anybody to fall to. But you got God. You got Jesus. So if you don't know Jesus today, and just because, you know, this was a long time I joked about going and preaching in front of 30 other preachers at, at, at seminary at Truett Hall, Mass Sanctuary. Not as good looking as ours. They have a big organ that we have a beautiful sanctuary. And this place was beautiful and intimidating. All the wood and the grass and all the stuff in the pews and just, you know. And it intimidated a lot of people that were preaching. Some for the first time. But I said, you know what? Just because the preachers don't mean you're saved, I mean, just because you go to church. I met a guy you know, that went to church for 20 years, led in worship. And then one day, God touched his heart and received Jesus. Nobody did. So if you need Jesus, and you don't know him, it is open. But also, I want to call on you to remember us. Remember the Lord. Remember the scriptures. Man, bury them deep in your heart. Because they will serve you well. They really will. No matter what the world says, they will serve you well. And if today the Holy Spirit has been kind of living in that spirit of everyone, watch us say it's lips. Which I would suggest that's what's been like that. Reignite the Holy Spirit in your heart. Say, Holy Spirit, come into the dining room. Come and die. 
because the master's calling. That's another song. See, that's what happened when you use this holy song for the Lord. Come and die in the master's calling. Come and come. The master's calling. Come and die. Feed upon his blood. Come and die. The master's calling. So in conclusion, it is written. Now the term of this sermon when I was there is called walk the word. You know, you walk the ground. Walk the word. Work it. Use it. It enables you. It's the tool that makes the job easier. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, we thank you for this day you've given us all the time. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the words of Jesus and the Holy Spirit of God. I pray right now, this altar is open. If you need to come pray today, you need to seek the Holy Spirit. You need to seek Jesus as your Savior. You just need someone to pray for you because life has not been doing good. Life has been giving you limits and you hate lemonade. This altar is open. So if you need prayer, there's plenty of people in this building that will pray for you, pray with you, or just stand there and put a hand on your shoulder like, Man, I don't know what's going on, but God is able. One thing, Lord, that I've learned lately that we know that God can, but do we believe God will? Jesus, we believe that you can and you will. And Lord, this altar is open, it's blessed in the music, and it closes service. We give you all the thanks and the glory in Jesus' name.
Lord God, I pray for this congregation today that you empower us through the Word of God and through the Spirit of the Holy Spirit that you enable us to do your will and your work in this world to be your light and to a broken world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.